The following is a paid program and does not necessarily reflect the views or ideas of the staff or management of KWSH or the 110 Broadcast Group. Okay, Dennis, just let me know when my mic's on today, okay? Wait, why are you pointing at me already? Are we, are we, are we, oh, it's Stongo Simino Logi, Jeremy Fultz, Cheho Jifkado, Simoja Nitta, Hedam Nitta, He, Dojan Popohoyan. I am your host today on the lovely Simino Nation radio program. Today is a beautiful day outside. It's kind of chilly, Dennis. What do they say? About 43, I'm guessing. Oh, right on. All right. 43 degrees outside. You know, I'm I'm not even wearing my jacket today, Dennis, because, you know, this is this is the time of year where I shine. This is fat boy weather. This is where I can walk outside in shorts and a tank top, and it feels like it's a good AC outside. Yeah. So as long as I don't catch a cold, I'll be doing all right. But alongside of me is the man, the myth, the legend. The language guy, the Dempster Jot guy, Hello. Mr. Delaney Pinnock, ladies and gentlemen. You need that applause track. Yeah. Not that laugh track, but that applause track. <laughs> so um, it's uh, been a great day out there today. Like you said, it's kind of chilly. Delaney, what you got going on today? Uh, I'm trying to stay warm. Oh, it's yeah. Easy. Mm, Delaney feels like it's uh, looks like it's about zero degrees outside. He's wearing a jacket, a scarf, a cap. Don't so. let him lie to you. He was <laughs> freezing earlier. So. <laughs> so Delaney, you know, always every week we come in here. What's the big question? What'd you do this weekend? Uh, survived again. Chopped some wood. <laughs> survived off the land and Sonics. Yep. 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 <laughs> so uh, Friday, when I was driving back home at the end of a hard, long work week. You know, we put in a good 40 hours before the general council meeting that we worked on Saturday, Mark. And Friday is a, a long trip home back to Oklahoma City. And Mark sent me this message that just came out of nowhere. It was like the angels from above went, ha ah! And this message came through that said they're selling Indian tacos at the Mary Lee Clark Methodist Church in Dell City. So I guess, Dennis, I made a quick detour off of I-40. Headed north to the Mary Lee Clark Methodist Church, went in, and they absolutely hooked me up with the largest taco I've, I think I've ever seen in my life for like eight bucks. And apparently, they do this benefit taco sale on the first Friday of every month. So I wanted to say hi to some of the new friends that we made or that I made there on Friday: Miss Judy, Judy Little, Tammy Long, Pastor David Little. Uh, Mado, for your hospitality, it was great, and I will see you guys next month. And then Saturday, like we talked about, there is a general council meeting. The Seminole Nation webpage and the Facebook page will share the unofficial results later today. And so keep an eye out for that. And then, so after the general council meeting on Saturday, there was an art show. I say art show. The Native Creations Art Market that was being held, I think was, was it uh, Chelsea supporter that helped with that? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, Chassis Foster, I think, might have. Chassis yeah. Foster. Yeah. And so, uh, shout out to them. So, I went over there uh, after the general council meeting on Saturday, bought me some things for the family. I'm, I'm not going to share what I bought because you might be getting them as gifts if you're listening. So, uh, I'm not going to divulge that information. I'm excited to see what you got me, man. Oh, uh, I, might, <laughs> I might need y'all to reopen that art market back up, <laughs> y'all. <laughs> and so, that was Saturday. And then... On the way back home after the art market, I heard some bad news that OSU came just inches shy of scoring a touchdown and becoming the Big 12 uh, champions. And apparently they lost the game, what I've heard, and Baylor won. So, yep, 
And then Sunday, man, that was just a busy weekend, Delaney. Sunday, I went to the FAM Art Market, which the FAM is the First Americans Museum in Oklahoma City. Saw some good friends like uh, Charlie Johnson, Seminole, Chickasaw artist who does Southeastern style Native American jewelry. Shout out to him. Dana Tiger, or Dana Tiger of the Tiger Art Gallery. Uh, went there, and then me and my little Hulk G, we went to the Scissor Tail Park, and they had a local vendor market as well. It's that time of the year, so support your local artists, mm -hmm. your local vendors, buy local. So anything you want to add to that, Delaney? Oh, you change your box. <laughs> support them. Yep. All right, and so that was my weekend, and um, usually about this time we kind of get into the transition for the moment of silence. And so as we do every week, we also uh, we want you to remember the ones that have started their journey, the ones that have walked on, also, the ones that are sick and in need, you know, with it being December, a lot of focus on uh, helping the ones out in need. So, you know, volunteer somewhere. Go do something for someone else. It's that time of year, you know, us as the Jotty people, uh, we normally try to do that anyway. You know, someone comes to your house, we grew up always feeding people, even if there wasn't any kind of food ready, they at least bring out the bologna sandwiches and, you know, share that with the visitors. So do something nice for someone this month or this week. And, uh, let's go ahead. And at this point, remember the ones that, um, are sick. I uh, got some, uh, sad news last night that, um, some of our elders are struggling with COVID again. And so, uh, continue to mask up. Um, we got the booster shot about a month ago. And so it's about that time. If you're, um, needing to get the vaccine or the booster shot ihs is still doing those shots for you guys so give them a phone call but at this point like we do every week uh, let's go ahead and give a moment of silence to uh, the ones that we need to remember in our prayers and the ones that started their journey all right but oh but oh and so, like we talked about this weekend, there was a general council meeting and um, on the Seminole Nation website as well as the Facebook page. The unofficial results will be updated. But since we have some guests in the studio today, we're going to go through some department news pretty quick and then get right to the guest. And so, um, I'm going to kind of start this off, Delaney, and we'll just kind of go back and forth if you want to. But Taro, if you are a Seminole artist, our Taro department would like to hear from you. Uh, Miss Vashonda Carter. So uh, it's important to keep a list of artists. So when we are presented with projects like a language project that we are currently doing, uh, we have some uh, people and some artists to choose from and we have some availability. And so if you are a Seminole artist or even a Native American artist that would like to be placed on the tarot list, please give Vashonda Carter a phone call, 405 Six 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 zero eight five seven, or you can email Miss Carter at Carter dot V is in Victor at SNO dash NSN dot gov. We have some ARPA news <clears throat> due to high volume of calls and messages coming in. These are some of the most frequently asked questions coming to the ARPA team regarding check status. Please be patient as the teams, departments, and individuals assigned to getting applications processed continue to work hard on getting checks out. Oh, Oneida. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. What address did I put on my application? We do not keep the application once it is verified and sent to the next step in our process. We do not have access to the application. We can't change the application in any way. It is, it is a legal document that the applicant has signed. Number two, what is the deadline? At this time, there is no deadline. Number three, I just sent my application online. Did you get it? We have received over 17,000 applications. Ooh. So, you know, mm -hmm. we receive them by a number, not by a name. Number four, can you tell me the status of my application? At this time, we are working hard to get the applications processed. Once it is verified, we send it on to the next step. This office cannot tell anyone how long it will take to get your check. Mud Eagles. Mm -hmm. And that information was also posted on the Seminole Nation uh, Facebook yesterday as well. And so from the communications department, the December issue of the Joga Ptolemy will be available next week. That is the tribal newspaper. Uh, be sure to check out the copy. 
as there will be some monthly segments from language, historic preservation, and soon to come, the diabetes program with some health tips. All right, like Jeremy said, some tips of the day. Workout, workout um, tips. <laughs> check out, check, check out what, the, what kind of tips? <laughs> I'm reading. You got this set up weird for me now. Oh, I'm my bad. I'm just like, go check out their page on Facebook to see some of those tips, Jeremy. All right, sounds good. Delaney can't read, I guess, my rundown <laughs> of the radio show. And so, oh, man. check out the Seminole Nation of Oklahoma Diabetes Facebook page, is what Delaney <laughs> was trying to say. Save me some time. Yeah. There. So they, because oh. they share some good tips. <laughs> that's why. Uh, and CHR. So the CHR program will be hosting in Coat Drive. Uh, they will be accepting donations until the end of December. That's the end of this month. We will update more information with the day and time of distribution closer to January. If you have any questions, feel free to call the number listed on the flyer. That number, 405-584-8095, or you can contact Christina, 405-584-8093. Donate your unwanted coats to help to help others stay warm and that's part of what we were talking about earlier do something for someone else this time of year and that's through the month of december the drop-off location is the jafigny wellness center that's 35 445 highway 59 seminole oklahoma or if you just go to the wellness center at the mississippi mission that's where it's at Sindoc seminole nation division of commerce wants to show their appreciation to our active seminole nation military by sending a gift this Christmas season, please email your information by December 16th. That includes name, mailing address, and branch you serve to Molly Ely at M-E-A-L-Y at S-N-D-O-C-O-K dot com. Mado and happy holidays from Sindoc. All right. Uh, from our JOM department, we woke a public school is having a JOM meeting today, 5.30 p.m. in the high school library. They're doing some good things over in Wewoka. And we actually met with uh, one of the Wewoka representatives last week, Delaney. Mm -hmm. So parents, please get involved. They're doing some good things and applying for some good things. And uh, there might be a partnership later involved between the language department and Wewoka. So, yeah, look forward to it. Yeah, look forward to that. You want to do that one? The higher ed. Okay, yeah, higher ed. Oh. We have two announcements for the higher ed. So the Seminole Education Adult Education GED Program Guidelines. Our number one priority is to service Native American students to obtain their GED as soon as possible. With space and time permitting, non-Native American students may fill out appointment times. However, non-Native American students may be bumped to another time and date automatically with the discretion of or with the discretion of the director of adult education. Non-native students may seek out GED classes at their local workforce center. If you have any questions, you can contact 405-716-6041. And then also the Train Scholars Project. The Train Scholars Project is a collaborative partnership between the University of Oklahoma and the Texas A&M University uh, research to advance the field of special education transition. Uh, the program admission requirements applications are due January 15th, uh, 2022 or until filled. And it's uh, $30,000 per year stipend, all tuition and benefits paid, 2000 year year conference travel. If you have any questions, contact Kendra Williams Dim for more information. The email klwd at ou.edu. Or I guess that's just ou.edu. klwd at ou.edu, Delaney. We have some news from the Honor Guard. So they have a big project coming on, the Hall of Veterans Wall Dedication, where they're going to be needing some fo photos from veterans. Yeah. Let, so. Let's not forget... Today is the 80th anniversary of also Pearl Harbor. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Mado, for everyone who served, and, you know, the Honor Guard's still being active, you know, even though it's getting close to Christmas, they are still everywhere right now. They're still active. They've been in the Shawnee Christmas Parade. They're also, they were also at the Intertribal Day of Prayer in Wewoka with Chief Lewis Johnson and Honor Guard Princess Gabby Factor. And like Delaney said, the Honor Guard is still looking for photos for the Veterans Project, which is the Hall of Veterans Wall Dedication, and they need your photos. So the hall is being dedicated 
to all Native American military vets, photos are needed for that project. You can send them to Seminole.vets at SNO-NSN.gov. Again, that's Seminole.vets at SNO-NSN.gov. Include your photo, your name, wartime era, branch, tribal affiliation, and any kind of story notes. And then also the language department is starting in-person and virtual classes on January 3rd. They'll run from 12.10 uh, 12, p.m. to 12.50 p.m. The in-person sessions are booked up already. However, we are still taking Zoom participants. And so if you have any questions or you want to sign up, call Catherine Howe with the language department, 405-562-5567. And also, Delaney, just a quick note. Mm -hmm. Catherine went to the uh, Choctaw Nation powwow last weekend or this weekend yeah. and won fifth place in like junior oh. Miss Adult Buckskin or yeah. okay. one of them Buckskin categories. <laughs> but she got fifth place, so congratulations, Catherine. All right. Okay. You got that ETA, the ARPA assistance. Some social services, ETA, ARPA energy assistance start, started on the 22nd of November. If requesting firewood. You will need the firewood vendor quote as well as a W-9 that must be completed. Applications will not be processed electronically. This program is available to Seminole Nation tribal members in and out of state. How to apply. Applications can be printed off on the Seminole Nation website, completed, and will be accepted by mail, fax, or drop box located outside the social services office. Applications are available outside the social services office. Is that in by IHS, I'm guessing? Applicants yeah. can call 405-257-7200, option two, then three, and request application be mailed to them. And then right off the press, I got an email here from Brooklyn Harris with the CHR department. It says, good morning, Seminole tribal members listening right here today on the radio. The CHR program has openings this month for tribal members needing transportation to the Wawoka Indian Health Clinic to receive their COVID-19 booster and or flu vaccination. You know, when I got my booster, I also got my flu vac as well. And so if you have any questions, contact them at CHR. Again, that's 405-234-5243. And also news from the Historic Preservation Office. It's someone's birthday over there. We've got about 20 emails and 20 text messages celebrity, saying yeah. Mr. Jake Tiger, the celebrity over at HPO, is having a birthday. So happy birthday, Jake. Your friends really love you to, to bombard us so much. But we're not going to say they all came from you. But all your friends that send us emails and texts about your birthday. So happy birthday, Jake. He's not the only one, though, with the birthday. Are we reading that now? Or? Oh, no, no. That's no. just HBO <laughs> <Okay>. News. <laughs> Sorry, Jake. I want to try to steal the slime up. <laughs> Is he the only one? No, he's not. But he, We also work with Jake, and he's a good friend of ours, so we can you know, razz him a little bit. Um, they also sent over today at 7.30 through 8.30, Muscogee Language Topic, a Jolagi Wiskada presentation by Mr. Win, or Mr. Ben Yehola. Uh, information can be found on the Muskogee page administered by David Frank. The presentation will be on Zoom. And then also, like normal, if you're looking for any job openings, the well, today the HR department will be attending, attending the HR and Indian Country Conference virtually today, which is 12-7, and also tomorrow, Wednesday, 12-8, from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Although they are in the office, they will be in sessions all day, so if you need HR assistance, Please email or call and schedule an appointment, the 405-257-7200 number for them. But you can also go online to sno-nsn.gov, check out the career tabs, and you'll see all the open positions that we have available. Uh, accounting manager, uh, ASAP director, compliance officer. There's several in there today, Delaney, so uh, make sure you guys go check that out. Also, as normal with Seminole Nation dot Casino, you can check out the jobs there. You want to get those birthdays? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Big shout out to my Chickasaw brother Brandon Wide Eagle, Jennifer Lane, Jula Harjo, Miranda Coon, Angela Larney, like we said earlier, Jake Tiger, Amanda Little, Flo Wise, Gabby Rice, Shannon Jones wants to wish her. Mother, Barbara Hansinger, happy birthday. K 
can't forget Larry Bird, the legend. He turned <laughs> 65 today. <laughs> Bo leave, wanted that one. <laughs> leave it to you, Delaney and Bo to come up with uh, what they call it, Larry Legend. But uh, also while we're transitioning, the Seminole Nice Annual Snowman Wonderland, uh, Monday, December 13th from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the Reynolds Wellness Center. Uh, make sure you go by and check them out. Also, the Seminole Arts Council Annual Chocolate Festival, December the 11th from 12 to 6, 12 p.m. to 6 p.m., located at the Municipal Building. And then Seminole, I think, is uh, having their Christmas parade on December the 11th around 6 p.m. Uh, that's going to be on Main Street. And also, uh, they wanted to send out and touch base with everyone to let everyone know to be at the Pink Laundry Center no later than 5.30 on that day so they can begin at 6. And so, and also just a quick shout out to Blake Blaze Carter and also uh, Timber Carter for doing their best that they can do at the toughest uh, world championship, junior world championships in Las Vegas. So congratulations to them and also Serenity Jackaway from Tecumseh. Uh, she was selected to the Oklahoma Little All-City First Team. And so we have some Jess, there's some Jess, some guests joining us today. Uh, Miss Tess Teeby and Stephanie Haney Brown. Welcome. You, you guys can approach the microphone if you'd like to. You guys are standing kind of far away. This is a radio you want show. Me to sing? I, oh yeah. What do you have anything you'd like to sing? Well, no, I didn't prepare anything, oh. but I can just I can throw something together. Uh, Dennis hit hit one of them backtracks. <laughs> <laughs> this is the wrong place to threaten that because we've got it all right here. Okay, so. okay. Well, yeah. I, I got a kind of a sore throat, so we might oh. want to wait. <laughs> Damn, I have to mask up. Oh no. <laughs> well, welcome to the radio show. Uh, we were happy to have you guys here. Tell us who you are, where you're from, and what department you're from. All right. Um, I'm Stephanie Haney Brown, and I work with the Seminole Nation of Oklahoma Indian Child Welfare. I am the director there. Um, I grew up in Little Oklahoma. Um, I'm part of the Haney family, Miccosukee Band. And um, this is the second time I've worked for the tribe, and so we're expecting great things this time. And I'm Tess TB with um, ICW as a caseworker. I grew up in Wewoka, Oklahoma. I'm from the Ufala Band, and I've had my experience from the Cheyenne Arapaho Tribe ICW. Good deal. And also, Tess, we had an intern probably, what, two years ago? I believe it was maybe your little sister, Aoni. Yes. And she was right here. She filled in on the radio show a couple times. And yes. so shout out to Aoni. Uh, hope she's doing well. She's currently um, in South Carolina in boot camp. Oh, man. Oh, man. So if she hears it all the way out there, um, good luck. And, um, yeah, we remember. We remember. <laughs> so uh, tell us a little bit about what you guys, uh, what your departments are doing right now. Okay. Um, in Indian Child Welfare, we've um, – we, we hit a crisis point. We have no open foster homes. Um, so right now we're focusing on trying to get some open. I was the only foster home open for the tribe, and whenever I took the director position, I could no longer take children. Uh, so there's definitely a crisis. Uh, we cannot um, provide any services for families or children that come into custody until we have open foster homes. So tell us, um, when you say foster homes, what does that kind of mean? Um, if there's a Seminole living anywhere in the state, we can come and uh, run some background checks. We can evaluate your home, talk to you a little bit, and then we could submit your home to the BIA for approval on opening you as a foster home. What that means is if a Seminole child comes into custody, we have a place to go with that child. At the current time, any child that comes into our custody will go straight to a shelter or a group home because we don't have any traditional homes available. Mm. And so that could be anyone. Is that uh, tell us what kind of families would qualify to be a foster home? Um, well, there for us, you have to uh, maintain um, a house that can accommodate. Um, obviously, if you're in a one bedroom house with ten people, we probably couldn't place a child with you. Um, so as long as you had adequate space and adequate. Um, uh, 
adequate income to be able to support the child, um, then we would we could consider placing. Um, also, you cannot have a, a significant criminal background. So anybody with warrants or felonies, um, you know, we some things we can't overlook, but the bigger things we really can't. So, but like it maybe a traffic ticket, a traffic that... ticket, speeding ticket, stuff like that. That's fine. Okay. You know, um, we're trying to maintain our Seminole children in as many Seminole homes as possible because um, just to keep them uh, connected to their culture. Because uh, even right now, uh, if a DHS person takes a Seminole child into a home, they're not always going into a Seminole home or a tribal home. They might be into a non-tribal family, and they don't understand the cultural dynamic. So tell us kind of the, the priority. I'm, I'm sure there's a, a, um, a list or a preferred order that when maybe a kid unfortunately comes into the system, that their place with who's first kind of what kind of walk us through we, that list. we always look at kinship first um, we'll start with bio parents if one parent is an offender we look for safety in a in another biological parent and we evaluate them like if they're not together anymore um, we also start looking at um, uh, siblings, we look at aunts, uncles, um, grandparents. We actually even consider um, a lot of distant family members as kinship. Uh, it could be your cousin's cousin, cousin, you know, but that's still kinship, uh, especially culturally. So um, we start looking at that base first. Then after we've exhausted kinship, we'll start looking to the same tribe. So are you a Seminole tribal member that can take in a Seminole child even though you're not related? Um, that way they can keep them connected. And when we exhaust that it's other tribes so maybe there's a creek home or a cherokee home that might be able to take the child um uh, non-tribal is always our last resort okay. good deal and so uh tell us a little bit then um obviously if you were the only seminole uh, foster home out there we we are in dire need of some homes out there and so if you um have room or have Maybe some people feel called to have, you know, to open their homes. And I know when I was growing up, you know, my family took me in. Mm -hmm. You know, I wasn't necessarily a foster kid, but I, I wasn't raised by my mother as well. So uh, my grandparents took me in. And that would also kind of be like the kinship home that you were talking about. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, I know in a lot of different areas, they always say it takes a village to raise a child. It takes a tribe to raise a child, and we need to keep our own tribal children within um, our culture and our custody. So if anyone's interested in being a foster parent or a foster home, what number can they call? Um, they can call my office at 405-257-9038, and they can ask for any one of us, and we'll get them to the right places, and we'll start working on that home immediately. Oh, that's awesome. That's some good. That's good to hear. And so also some big news. You guys are also doing the toy drive right now. Um, I saw an email that said something about close to 100 kids that would qualify. Tell us a little bit about that. Okay, um, currently we have four kids in our uh, tribal custody that are going through tribal court. Um, we wanted to make a good Christmas for them. But we have almost 100 ch uh, children in DHS foster care throughout the state. And we don't want to forget about those children as well. So our goal is to get gifts to each each child. So that would be 104 children. And of course, that's a huge undertaking. Um, so we're going to do as much as we can with what we have. Um, and, um, anybody that wants to donate, I mean, it's definitely welcome. Cause tell, tell us a little bit about where they can donate at. So okay. you, you guys are looking for toys or anything in particular? Um, nothing in particular, anything from age zero to 17. We can give you some gift ideas. A lot of the children, we have not talked to them about what they want because we don't know if we can provide. Okay. Um, so, but we have, um, uh, you can drop off donations at our office in Wewoka. We're right across from the tribal complex at any time, Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. Um, on Saturday, uh, Tess will be in office from 9 to 1230 to accept um, any donations on Saturday. Um, on Sunday, we will be at Cash Saver uh, parking lot to accept drop-off donations is from that two to four. Seminole? That is in Seminole. Okay. Yes, um, they've been great to um, let us have a little spot there and to be able to accept. So uh, cash saver two to four on Sunday. Yes, okay. and then we will move over to Cromwell from five p.m. to seven p.m. Dollar is, General. Is that home of the Butner Eagles, Cromwell? 
Well, we don't talk about them. <laughs> I'm a I'm a Strother graduate oh. myself, Yellow Jacket Pride. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but we can give a shout out to Strother. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, that that's the dollar store in Crom. Well, we'll we'll call it Cromwell. We'll be town correct here. Oh yes, and the, and the manager is amazing. The staff is amazing. So if you have any last minute gifts that you want to buy and donate, you know, go to Dollar General there in Cromwell, and we'll accept those on Sunday. Good deal. Um, any place else where they can donate or just bring it by the office? Um, they can bring it by the office. We are more than willing to come to you. Um, just let us know. We will, we have a van. We will travel. Um, not to get out of work. <laughs> but, but this, you know, we'll come travel for these kids and pick up any donations. You know, and I can personally verify that they do have a van because I've seen it parked right outside the radio station. <laughs> it's a nice white van that has a government tag on there. Yes, yes. <laughs> so we, we've got a little bit of time here. Tell us why or what situation would maybe a, a Seminole family or citizen need to get in contact with your guys' office? Um, they just need, um, uh, they need to be, be willing to do fingerprints, um, and fill out background check forms. Um, we need to know who all resides in the residence. And, you know, as a lot of, uh, tribal homes, all of our cousins and cousins, cousins come stay the night throughout the month. You know, we're not looking to list all of those, but you know, just anybody who lives in the home, they need to have ages available because there is a max number of children we can place in a home. Okay. Um, so that would be the. And I, I think I even saw in you know, y'all's new Facebook page. I might, I might well say it looks nice. Well, that's Tess. That's Tess did Tess? it. It's all Tess. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I even seen that was a question that was asked. Um, I think today or yesterday, how many kids could they have in the home, or mm -hmm. if they maybe had too many? And, oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, max occupancy is six. Oh. Six children in a home. Um, under special conditions, we can get an approval. Like, let's say you have six children in your home and. And your niece or nephew comes into care we can make an exception in those cases we just have to obtain approval and usually it's not very hard to do so to be, make that seventh kid good deal well we're getting ready to run out of time any last announcements from you guys is there anything you'd like to share with the millions of tribal members listening across <laughs> this great county okay um i just i just want everybody to know the need i mean we are in crisis mode and i i don't say that lightly i don't throw that word around but um these are our children we're talking about and it is our future so we have to find some stability for them so if you can be a foster home if you know anybody that can be a foster home please 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 just spread the word yeah. and if you have any questions or if you're even think well maybe my home might qualify mm -hmm. It, there, there's no harm in a phone call to there's you guys not, just to find out, right? There's not, and everything is kept confidential. So, you know, for whatever reason, if you don't, if you get assessed and you don't pass, I'm not going to put it on Facebook. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, really, I, I think that a lot of reluctance is that. No, we keep everything confidential yeah. and discreet. So, what, what do they say? The worst that you guys can say is no. No. Yeah. And and we're still where we are. And the best case scenario, it, you, you might change someone's life. Yes. You might provide stability in someone's life. You might provide cultural awareness for someone who may or not have had that opportunity to have been that culture awareness provided. I don't know if I said that all right. I, I think I made my point. I get, I get it. Um, <laughs> all right. Yeah, well, definitely. give us your phone number one more time. All right. 405-257-9038. Good deal. And so you can catch the rebroadcast of this radio show on the Facebook page, YouTube, and the tribal website, sno-nsn.gov. For the Seminole Nation of Oklahoma every Wednesday around 8 p.m. If you have any news or announcements you want to share on the community and events Facebook page, please email the communications staff at seminolemedia at gmail.com or call 405-652-7251. And as always, tune in every Tuesday at 11 a.m. right here on KWSH 97.7 FM or the legendary... 12.60 a.m. We'll see you next week, Mado, for coming by. Mado for having us. Yeah, we'll see you guys again, I'm sure, soon. And be sure to go drop some pulleys off for these, for these nice people right here that work in Indian child welfare. You know, it's, they're doing a good thing for us. So, Mado for that. All right, Mado and GM Benayasi. Dennis, take it away.